the last time we played Pokemon Infinite Fusion, I decided to do a Nuzlocke using only AG Slash Fusions. And we got some pretty cool looking fusions from that, but this time, instead of fusing with a single Pokemon, how about we do an entire typing? I chose Dragon because in the base games, you can't really do a Dragon Run through Kento, so this is a great opportunity. This will be a hardcore Nuzlocke, so just because of that, you better subscribe. And to add spice to the pot, this will be randomized, so this not only includes our encounters, but any trainers we fight as well. So without further ado, this is my attempt at beating Pokemon Infinite Fusion with only Dragon Fusions. We start off as always in Professor Oak's lab, and we notice there's only one Pokeball on the table. What could it be? I made it an Axew. I feel like he's a good choice for a starter, and it was either this or resetting until we got a randomized dragon. But I didn't think it was a big deal. With our little fanged friend, we take on this loser. No, seriously, that's what I named him. And it looks like Gramps calls him that too. Loser starts off with a dear lord, what is that? Uh, I'm confused. Is that Polyrath and Snorlax? And if it is, why is it just named Polyrath? Or maybe it's Polyrath and Polyrath fused? Why does he have this right off the bat? Yeah, we're definitely not winning that, but technically we haven't lost yet since we haven't even fused him or even have any Pokeballs yet. I'll give it to you this time, loser, but just this once. So the way I'm going to be doing this Nuzlocke is we're going to look for a dragon type first in the grass, if there is one, and if there is, we'll catch it, and then the encounter immediately after will be the Pokemon we fused the dragon with. If there's no dragons on the route, then we won't catch anything at all. Good? Great. I'm also going to count the reverse fusion as a separate species so that we have more encounters. Assuming it's dragon type, of course. That being said, for Route 1, we will fuse whatever we run into with Axew. And we have... a Hoppip. That's kind of a letdown, but who knows, it might at least look cool. Now one additional thing I want to mention is that if both fusions have the dragon typing, we can choose whichever is the coolest design. So for this fusion, we have Axipip and Hapu. Decisions, decisions. Hapu it is. He looks kind of cute. In Viridian Forest, I was about to give up searching for a dragon type, but I ended up finding a Bagon. We almost didn't catch her, but thankfully on our second to last Pokeball, she was ours. So after going to heal and buying more Pokeballs, I went back for our second Pokemon to fuse with, and it's... Yep, that's right. That's a full odds shiny Iggly buff. And it was indeed the encounter immediately after Bagon. So now we have a choice of either Iggly gone or the buff. Honestly, I like Babuff more, and although shinies are random colors in these games, this looks like big on shiny. Also, I prefer Dragon Fairy type. With our two little dragons, I go scope out Brock's gym, and it looks like he's rocking fairy types. Oh, come on, Brock. Am I really going to lose my shiny and possibly the run right now? My plan originally was just to spam Dragon Rage to one-shot everything, but clearly that's not going to work anymore. We just have to pray that this doesn't go south. So we enter our two little dragons against Brock's fairies. First up on Brock's team is Axril. Turn one, I went for a sweet kiss as Ember won't do much and neither will bite. From there, I went for a charm as he hit himself, which I know will make him do less to himself, but I don't want to lose too much health. Midway through, I swapped into Hapu as he was using Leer on Mabuff. We come in on a super resisted bubble. From there, two fairy winds take Axra, and following that is Manwile. This should be fairy fighting type, so I continue going for fairy wind, but his karate chops sure do a chunk to me. I did synthesis until eventually Brock used Pursuit, which will get us back to full health. We did risk a crit doing that, but I think it was worth it. Now, I'm pretty sure this was a speed tie since sometimes I was out speeding and sometimes he was. So after a couple of fairy wins, he went first, biting Hapu to death. Jeez, Brock, that's quite a brutal way for me to go considering you have fairies of all typings. Although I guess fairies do take care of the dragons. Now, just so we can see more fusions, like I said, I will be allowing myself to use the reverse fusion of a Pokemon if it dies, assuming it has the dragon type. But anyways, Babuff here is our only hope. He goes for three Fury Swipes, which do a ton, and our Ember doesn't quite kill. Now, if he used Fury Swipes five times, it might have KO'd, but Brock's an idiot and just used Bite again. So that's the battle. Our Shiny is still alive. I guess for the death counter, I will count this as a death. As I said, they're technically different species, sort of. All right, Axe Pip, don't disappoint me like your former self. Huh, this girl has one too. Might be a sign. Over in Mount Moon, Mabuff evolved into Mapuff. So now instead of getting gains, he's smoking that good. Okay, Duquil makes me want to do a ghost run in this game. I guess there's no point in waiting to evolve Batpuff. So now we got Batuff. I guess we're back to gains. That's the great thing about fusions. Sure, dragons evolve super late, but Wigglytuff doesn't, so they balance each other out. Speaking of which, now we have an Axloom. What's Pichu's favorite place to visit? Machu Pichu. Um, uh, that, that was... 
That was really bad now that I think about it. You know, you guys are literal criminals, so like, why are you just leaving the door unlocked like this for anybody to come in? Come on now, let's use our brains. Nothing too crazy happened in our next rival fight, except I was poisoned and he was circle throwing me back into Axe Loom, which makes us take poison damage. I just prayed we were faster, and we were so we could do some healing. Axe Loom almost disappointed me, but thankfully, we pulled through. On Route 24, I ended up finding a horsey, but since fusions need to have the dragon typing, I should probably wait until it's a Kingdra, but I never do that. I will allow myself to use this right now, but the only reason I won't is because I want to see what we end up for a team, so then I could decide which evolution I want. Now Misty this time around has grass type Pokemon, and I could just use Dragon Rage, but I led Batuff since she has Ember. Overall, it was a pretty easy fight, so on to something a little more exciting. Trap Inch, which we found on Route 5. I almost ran away from it since it's not a Dragon type. And I kind of just forgot. Unfortunately, in the moment, I was kind of thinking, hey, we probably shouldn't use it until it's a dragon type, but this changed very quickly, and you'll see why. It also had his hidden ability, Sheer Force. And thank God Charmander was our pair for Trap Inch. This should definitely look dope. Frasher is definitely a good boy. And the dragon types didn't stop there. On Route 6, Dino appeared, and this can be used right now. Now, this sucker was not playing around. It was hitting extremely hard, and it also had Dragon Rage somehow. But I was able to synthesis and catch it after failing once before. Thank Arceus. Alright, I mean, I, I don't hate Victory Bell to be honest, but to fuse it with the Dino is kind of meh. It looks like for this one we only have one option, so let's go with Weepino. What a name and what a design, man. Hey, he must suck mad. Okay, this is just creepy, but for some reason I need it. I just want to give this thing a hug. Now, Lieutenant Surge is a troubling guy. He has ice types, and although it's better to get these types out of the way right now so that they don't appear later, at least I think that's how it works, I really don't think I'm going to be able to beat this with the team I have. There's no way I'm going to get through three ice types while having two Pokemon who are quad weak to it. So this is when I decided, for the sake of the run, to use the Trap Inch and Charmander line that I just found. It is not a dragon type yet, but I do know which fusion will be the dragon one and that would be this guy right here. So knowing 100% that this has the potential to be a dragon type, I put him on the team. And geez, did this puzzle take forever to get right. So let's stop putting this off. Duba is up first, and this should be pretty easy. Charinch with sheer force will remove the burn effect on Fire Fang and power it up by 50%, making Charinch extremely deadly. Also, Lieutenant Surge just used Aqua Ring, but let my boy have his moment. Sycion is next, and another bug type. It went for Fury Cutter, which was great, until we missed a big Fire Fang. The following turn, an Ice Fang nearly destroyed us, and we one-shot it. As you can see, without Charinch, I don't think we would have made it past that. His final Pokemon does scare me though. I did do a little research to try and piece together what kind of moves this thing has and what typing it was. It's definitely Ice Dragon, meaning Batuff's Draining Kiss will be super effective. Now it could have Ice Shard, and I don't think Charinch lives, so I went into Batuff, and there it is. Thankfully, it didn't do over half. So we live in Icy Wind after, and a Draining Kiss does nothing, but if we lose Batuff here, we can still use the Reverse Fusion at the expense of Salamence, since it won't be Dragon at that point, because of the Flying type. We'd have to keep it as a Shell Gone, however, I need to keep as many Pokemon alive, so I think this is the safer play. So our Shiny Batuff bites the dust, and Axe Loom comes in. Knowing we outspeed, a Dragon Rage finishes the battle. Tough choice to make, but I do think it was the right one. At least we still have you, Wigglygon. But again, he'll never be a Salamence since he'll be normal flying instead. The good news is now we can have a stab on double edge while also having the Rockhead ability. You gotta look at the bright side of everything. Like this Axe Luff Fusion, who is definitely going to be my pillow tonight. I'm totally gonna change the channel mascot to this Mareep Fusion. Look how it claps. Over in Lavender Town, Loser wants to go at it once again, but I don't know what he's trying to do with this go vial. Honestly though, maybe I do. It looks kind of cool. Thankfully, it didn't end up having an ice type move or a water type move. But holy Arceus, imposing is the coolest thing I've seen all run. Unfortunately, it did have Levitate, so I went into Wigglygon. His team is really scaring me right now. Fortunately, Wigglygon was able to wear it down even after a potion, but on my switch into Axluff, it exploded itself. Thankfully, we did live. Axlove does have Synthesis, so we were able to heal up for Polyrath after this Galvanma. But the sucker used Circle Throw, which switched out into no other than Wigglyon. Oh dear god, he almost died. No more Circle Throws after that, and we somehow managed to escape a death in this battle. How? I don't know, but I can only imagine our two fallen brethren looking over us. By the way, we were like five levels higher as well. Bro, what, what was that team? Get, get away from me. Now on the route left of Celadon City, I found this Dradum, but it's already fused with Beldum, so I think I'm just going to keep it that way. 
They didn't take too many tries to catch, and it's Dragon and Psychic type. The Reverse Fusion did look better, however, it's Steel Dragon, and once it becomes Dragonite, it should be Steel Flying. Yeah, I checked. Uh, it stays Steel Dragon. Interesting. I do kind of need this typing right now, though, so I will be using Metnair, and if it dies, it won't be a huge loss since we still have the Reverse Fusion, which will be Dragon type as well as a Dragonite. But but again, I, I checked. Metnair evolves into a Dragon type as well. I don't know why, but. It does. Yo, Klinkardos is crazy. Looks like a paradox form. The time has come. Our first battle with Giovanni. And he starts off with a Meryl King. Victrino can easily take care of that. You know, if, if we didn't miss. Once that's out, we got a big bat squirt mens. I went into Metnair as this thing does have Dragon Claw. Now I really don't want to lose Metnair here and this thing is really strong. So I did do some research. This monster isn't actually a dragon type. That's right, he's an imposter. And that can only mean one thing. He's water and flying type. Giovanni did flinch us though, but we did manage to break through the second time. One Dragon Claw and we're so dead. It does, however, look like Metnair's life is going to come to a short end here. Wait, he switched? Why? Axluff, it's your turn. See, Axluff recently learned Dragon Dance, so after some Dragon Dancing and healing with Synthesis, yeah, we couldn't do anything with this Max Potion and the fact that he had Charge Beam on the Croc. It was looking rough, but I went into Wigglygon who could tank those all day. Thankfully, Wigglygon was able to take out Crocogang, but back out came Squirtments and Wigglygon was in his line of sight. Knowing there's nothing I can really do, I had to sack Wigglygon, which honestly looking back was kind of dumb since Metnair should have just been sacked, but oh well. Charinch was the only one who was healthy. We couldn't even take less than half from a Zen Headbutt. From there, I went into Metnair on a Zen Headbutt. But guess what? We lived, guys, and I just happen to have Bullet Punch. Adios, buddy. Oh dear god, I thought there was one more on his team. Bro, my beautiful shiny just got decimated. What is wrong with you, and why do you always have stacked teams? I figured since Wiggly gone is, well, gone, I should just add Horsey and Eevee to the team. They won't be Dragon types just yet, but we can make them into a water type with Vaporeon. And there she is, Vapor Draw. This should be the fusion that evolves into a dragon and water type. It also just so happens to be that Erika is a fire type expert. Charange also evolved into Charva, which is now Fire Dragon with EQ, so we should be fine either way. Another thing is we have Levitate to be immune to super effective ground type attacks. So without further ado, let's see what Erika has. Her first Pokemon was a piece of cake, but Nangala did put up a fight having Mega Drain for Vapor Draw. It couldn't really hit Axluff though, so two Dragon Dances later and an Acrobatics. Yeah, there was no chance for her. Grabber Leon did scare me, but it only used Stealth Rock, so we were in the clear there. Oh my god, oh my god, no way. No freaking way, we got another shiny. And it's a horsey? There's just no way. Oh shit, I almost killed it. I'm just gonna replace the horsey we already have, but that's absolutely insane. Two full odd shinies in one run. Oh no, what happened to you? Oh, you're just ruined. Now, I just remembered something. I think some Pokemon have their Megas if you fuse them with themselves, so I'm pretty sure catching this Mareep and fusing it with another one will give us an extra Dragon Encounter. I'm going to allow this on the off chance I can't find any other Dragons considering I have yet to see a Gibble or any Legendaries. This would also apply to Trico, which I think I saw somewhere. All right, what kind of sick joke is this? There we go, Mega Ampharos. Yep, there he is in all his glory. Now we just unfuse, do it again, and we have this little guy. That does look pretty sick. This does as well. Wait, I don't think Sceptile is going to be in his mega form. Oh my God, that's the greatest creation I've ever laid my eyes on. And there it is. The dragon type. Now we're ready to get down to business. Koga's expertise was in normal types, which led to things like this. It looks naked. Brick Break would have destroyed this abomination, but he ended up switching into a zoo cruel. Finally, a smart switch from one of these NPCs. Well, sort of. I still have Psychic. And he was also using Barrier, so I don't know what that's about. Milking was really... Milking? Oh, oh my god. I just realized it says milking. But yeah, it was really cool and it packed a punch with Zen Headbutt. He did switch again though into Pori King. This thing was going for big thrashes and it was terrifying. It hit everyone hard, even Metnair who was resisted. The good news was he was out of potions already and he was getting hit by his black sludge item. Unfortunately, I do have to sack Metnair, but at least we still have the reverse fusion. With this, Ampharos can come in. I mean, this thing's stab thrash was brutal. It nearly one-shot Ampharos. We did prevail though, but Milking was still on the field and it looks like I need to sack something else. I really didn't want to sack Ampharos, but it was looking like it was going to go that way. We could outspeed here, but knowing my luck, we probably won't. We don't, and this really- OH MY GOD, HE MISSED! Come on! 
Let's go! And that's why I love Ampharos as a Pokemon. Shows up every time for Papa. You're not as cute as Metnair, but you'll have to do. Moving on to the little Sylphco mission, it's time once again to bring shame on Loser's name. Although, I guess the name does that by itself. By the way, I love how we're just casually having a battle right in front of Giovanni. Like, this is why nobody likes you, bro. Jumpstart was no problem and then came out this pupy junior. What a name. This Luchek used Mirror Move, which is funny since I have Water Absorb and I use Surf, so it just healed me. And then he Hydro Pumped? Hello? As always for this Polygraph, Broluff took care of it. Well, almost, if we didn't get confused. Yo, did you just not hear us battling? right in front of you. Hey, stop ignoring me. Now Giovanni was not messing around with the Pidgey and Arceus fusion, but it ain't shit to the monster that is Sheldon. All hell Giovanni? Yeah, right, all hell Sheldon. What'd that tongue do though? Now Vaporjaw did almost die since she ganged up on me, and this was with my Quick Claw popping, but Arceus just happened to have extreme speed. Our shiny is still alive and Hurricane came out. Now I don't know why I went into Dragotang on a Heracross, but I did and it had Mega Horn. I actually yelled out when this happened because this definitely hurt. It doesn't make it any better that Giovanni's Pokemon are literally above the level cap by a lot and Sheldon isn't putting up much of a fight. He was ganging up on me again, now using Rollout with his Cinda'u, so it's only a matter of time before something else ties. Thankfully Froloff was able to KO Hurrikan with Acrobatics. I did switch into Sceptile, but he hit another rollout, and this time Sheldon is using Whirlpool of all things. I need to hope he misses. Ladies and gents, he did in fact miss, and a Night Slash goes off doing a bit, and Sheldon actually did something using Brine, as well as its wrap, finishing it off in the same turn. Honestly, one death there is great, as that battle can be very rough due to the level increase. On the bright side, we can now see what our Dragonair turns into. Oh wow, this is completely useless. This, on the other hand, is pretty nice. And it looks like Salamence fusions were also a disappointment. The good news is I think Chargon is super cute just like Flygon. Okay, this is definitely better than Chargon. Too bad it's not a dragon type. Now Sabrina has poison type Pokemon and Chargon has EQ, so I'm hoping we can do this as she starts with a water type. Well, at least we're neutral to that. Holy jeez the, that one shot. We passed would have died in one shot, but it had sturdy. Okay, I definitely see a big thrash coming, so hopefully this doesn't hurt. Oh goodness, it was just flail. She did end up switching into Muckross, who took half to an earthquake, so now the question is, are we faster or not? We are, and there goes that. Chargon, you are truly a legend. I did not mean to find this dragon scale, but I guess now we have a Kingdra. Oh yeah, I love that. Finally, I found a Garchomp. I've been searching in every piece of water I could find since I've had Surf. There it is, Garchomp in all its glory. Thank god I caught it too because I was a turn away from losing Ampharos. And the Pokemon to be fused with it was an Arcanine, which I'm not denying is a cool idea, but we already had Chargon. Anyways, let's see what this turns into. Oh my god! Screw the typing, this is the best fusion on the team hands down. At least now we have Intimidate. I do believe this is the last Dragon type we have access to that isn't a Legendary, so the only way we can get more is if we run into something like Rayquaza or Dialga. My boy is ready to go into his next job interview. Too bad he won't live to get that job. This has got to be the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. It could have been you, but I've kind of already forgotten how you even died. Blaine, Blaine, Blaine. Your fire burned so hot, all of your Pokemon died and became ghost types. Oh, well, here comes the casual switching again. You know, I can do that too. I know you're a grass type, so bye bye. Genmega, I must say your design is creepy, yet very cool. Chargon did do half, but he also did a chunk to us, so Vaporjaw did come in since she's a bit bulkier. I forget that the gym leaders keep their regular items, so this thing was holding a Pasho Berry. Very unlucky of me, but Arceus was with us and didn't let us get flinched by Dark Pulse. Everyone was pretty weak, so I did end up going into Axeluff. After some healing and acrobatics, we destroyed that thing. For some reason, I did think that was his last Pokemon, but nope. Giranor was his ace. It did brain dance, so I healed, but the Shadow Ball next turn didn't feel so good, Mr. Sark. And it would have been fine since I Swords Dance and Acrobatics was now a two shot, but his Hurricane confused us, so the only thing we can do now is try and break through. Yeah, I didn't think so. Honestly, that was my fault for not setting up on Tauros, but what can you do? Sceptile thankfully did end up finishing it off with a Leaf Blade, but uh, that hurt. That's my starter, man. 
I'll miss you, pal. Hopefully we're not about to miss anyone else, but the last time I was here, nearly my entire team died. I did do some research this time around though. I found some Yachi berries and I gave one to Ampharos. This way we could power gem Articuno, but apparently this thing has a berry for that. So we trade hits and our power gem did more thanks to a crit. The other two didn't actually attack for that turn. I did manage to take out Articuno, but Ampharos is in rough shape due to the other two. We absolutely have to switch out, so I go into Vapor Draw, who has a Citrus Berry. Unfortunately, the first bird crit on his agent power. Luckily, two serves take out Moltres, and we were outspeeding that, whereas Zapdos got an agility off earlier, so it almost KO'd us on the second turn. From there, I went into Sceptile on a very lucky discharge. It could have went for that at any moment, but for some reason, it didn't. Well, I, I, I guess probably because we're dragon type, but I didn't really think that in the moment. I'm pretty sure he could get Rock Slide somewhere, but I was just lazy to find it. I did end up chipping with Dual Chop, but then he got a big Omni Boost, so now we don't outspeed. I'm pretty sure this thing has Air Slash, but he just used Discharge again, and Dual Chop barely KO'd. Phew! No deaths. I was hoping Moltres' stats would randomize into a Dragon Legend, but instead we got Garchomp. So that's a no-go. Wait, wait, wait. How is Giovanni an Ice-type trainer? Well, that's icing on the cake. <laughs> that's icing on the cake because he's an Ice-type trainer. <sighs> I don't even mean to do it sometimes. Anyways, like I was saying, wasn't Lieutenant Surge an Ice-type? I thought no typings were supposed to repeat. I have a bad feeling about this. I did overlevel Ampharos, but in this game, if you unfuse Pokemon, you can de-level them again, so Ampharos is totally usable for this fight. He does start off with the Dudon, but I went for Earthquake and it went for Stone Edge. I think that sentence speaks for itself. You might think I'm crazy for sending in Sceptile, but a Drain Punch completely kills this thing. Unfortunately, Jinrai was out next. I'm not gonna lie, I really thought a quad effective Drain Punch would KO, but it didn't. And this thing has Avalanche, which means our Yachi Berry couldn't even save us. <sighs> I thought Giovanni didn't use potions for some reason, but apparently he does. So I just e-speeded with Garnine. I mean, come on. On top of that, I fire fanged and it did not KO. Oh, and he has two potions. Like how am I supposed to know that? I know I've played the game before, but I forget things. Well, no way he has three of them, right? Right? Oh, come on. Okay, somehow I did outspeed and got a clutch burn, but the question is, do I extreme speed now or not? Please tell me I e-speed now. Oh, thank Arceus and screw Darkrai. Oh, thank God that one shot. Katakuno. I did end up switching in on a future site, but it has freeze dry. Oh, how could I forget? I literally just fought an Articuno. Did you notice I stopped recording the deaths on screen? Ampharos did come in on a freeze dry with a Yachi Berry and a power gem was able to KO, but Golem was next. Where are my legendaries? Glaciate. Oh my God, how did we not die? I know it's a Goldeen, but seriously. Well, I mean, I don't think I can win. Bye, Ampharos. I love you. All right, I, I kind of misspoke. I I did win this thanks to E-Speed, but I mean, I can't win win. At least I didn't wipe to Giovanni. That's a plus, right? But yeah, I don't think I can win the Elite Four, even if I somehow found legendaries, which I don't think I will. And there's a rival fight right after this, so I can't even look in Victory Road. Yeah. There's no chance. It's unfortunate. A lot of my Pokemon were kind of just frail and a lot of them just evolved super late. I mean, I can't even use Hydreigon for crying out loud. Also, Altaria isn't in this game. That's crazy. It should have been you. But yeah, anyways, I'm kind of bummed out that I didn't win, but at the same time, I'm pretty satisfied that I'm playing a Pokemon game that isn't super difficult, but isn't easy by any means. Kind of like the best of both worlds here. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and this was still super fun to make, so I'm not mad at all. And if you try this for yourself, please let me know if you won and what team you ended up with, because... Giovanni should not have been a nice type trainer. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, I love you guys. Bye!